in most folk dance traditions, the men get to do the flashy stuff, and the women twirl and look pretty. And I, I'm just not that kind of woman. I, you know, I want the big stick, and I want to hit something. And, <laughs> and that's, uh, that's part of the fun for me. So to dance vigorously and with, uh, with strength, and, and you know, I just don't see that happening in a lot of the folk dance traditions. I say in performances that it's an ancient and obscure ritual dance form from England. It, it's not a social dance form, that's probably the most obvious thing, that you have uh, a set of Morris dancers that is male or female, but you don't have a social mixing. Of course you get mixed sides, but it's not a social dance. That becomes the most obvious thing, I think, to the viewer. It, it has a ritual function in, um, you can imagine, perhaps an ancient society where agriculture was really important and influencing the weather and influencing the, the forces of agriculture and the energies of the earth would be very important to these people. My name is June Harmon and I'm the foreman of Tiddly Cove Morris. Being foreman of the Morris team uh, involves everything to do with uh, choosing the dances the team will do, instructing the dance, um, determining what the style and the look of our interpretation of the dance, plus uh, a great deal to do with the uh, performance situation, um, what dances we will do, how we present ourselves, so um, it's probably the most, um, I think, important role <laughs> in the Morris. Arrive 6.15, um, 6.30, we'll have the latest if you're in kit. We want to be dancing. Yeah, we want to be dancing no no later than six forty five. Six forty five we're dancing. Well, we sort of we sort of yeah. meet on by the like, road by the Scotties. Yeah. So six fifteen under a discreet cup of tree. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, I get some video. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I really don't like dance where the the main thing is control. Most many dances like ballet, flamenco, they're very beautiful dances, but the dance is about how you control yourself. I really like dances that are about expression, expressing energy, and I can do that. And you can do that in Morris. The dance itself is fairly simple. But there is, you can express joy in the dance. And there's no particular, not so much concern about, you know, if your foot's pointed this way or that way. I am happiest on this planet when I am on a dance floor. Okay? Uh, I don't care to do high art. I don't care to be up on a stage performing. But if I am on the dance floor on a Saturday night, I just love it. I love to see the way people move when they're relaxed. Everybody on Saturday night listening to their favorite band has a signature move, and I love that. I think there's something holy about that. I really like the community of people that I dance with. That is one of the best parts to me, is the community. When uh, Ian and I got married, we got married here in Vancouver because I needed to be married in Canada rather than the States. All of our guests were the Morris, Morris men and women. How are you going to play? 
how do I do? It's two A's, two B's, two A's, two B's, two A's. Two A's, two A's. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Ready? <laughs> it's like playing <laughs> it's like you're a grown-up but you get to skip and throw things in the air and hit people with sticks and it's just like being a kid at the playground and we're like allowed to do that and we're actually paid to do that so that's cool I really like playing music and I think more than anything Morris dancing gives me the opportunity to play with other musicians I don't really have a musical outlet otherwise, and practicing by yourself gets kind of boring, which is why I don't really practice that much. The dancers have a big repertoire, and uh, I guess the musicians sort of have to have a repertoire that's always there, because you never know when it, the dancers are going to be like, okay, it's time to do this dance, so we have to know all the, I mean, you have to know all the songs, and uh, we also memorize them, but there's not really an option to... <laughs> bring paper or anything so there's a bit of work required to just memorize it and get it down and remember how it all goes. I think the favorite things are when we have a gig and it goes well and everyone is just really feeling up and this connection with the musicians and connections with the audience and with each other's dancers in a real sense that we've shared this with somebody and also had a good time doing it ourselves. I came to dance late in life. Dancing didn't interest me, the high school dances didn't interest me, the disco stuff appalled me. But I was listening to what comes under the umbrella of Celtic music a lot. Um, Scottish, Irish, fiddle tunes, things like that. And I knew there was a dancing that had to go with this. This music was just so alive, it was rude to sit and listen to it. It's, it's kind of like centrifugal force. Once you get pulled into it, it's really hard to get out. As soon as I found out about Morris, it would have been impossible for me not to do it, because I love it. And it's a fabulous aerobic exercise, and it's a way to celebrate the earth and, and celebrate my friendships too, and the, um, the kind of camaraderie that, that I've found in it. It's a, it's a wonderful thing. I belly dance and I do Irish set dancing and social dance, of course. One must know how to do the cha-cha and a foxtrot. <laughs>
<laughs> well, I, I, I would have to, that, that for a living part is, <laughs> it's not actually happened yet, but there's potential. Um, yeah, I'm a, I consider myself a near, near full-time painter and a painter who will one day make a living. I concentrate on the expressive figure, musicians and dancers, of course, because that's my, uh, it's my experience and that's what really draws me, uh, that, ex that, that whole area of human endeavor, making music and dancing to music. And um, I'm trying to do paintings that express at least the dancing from the inside out because I've done so much dancing. So I'm trying to express that movement and the joy. And I hang out with a lot of musicians who I see a lot of jam sessions and that particular uh, state that a musician gets into where they're really transported and the music is just the whole world at that moment. That's what really interests me. <laughs> I've been involved with Morris dancing like most of my life because my dad's uh, a dancer with VMM. But I've been dancing with Tiddly Cove for about eight months. A whole lot of people just came up to me and they were like, so when are you going to join? And I was like, oh, okay, I'll join then. It was kind of a sad thing. <laughs> this is my dad, he's a BMM. Yeah. BMM Extraordinary. <laughs> I've had so much fun here that I don't remember my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> I never had uh, any dance classes there. Well, first of all, they're forbidden. <laughs> Second of all, there's not that much going on in dancing there. And uh, music, we have a rich music there, but uh, I, I never had a chance to get to know our instruments or our music very well uh, as a kid. Um, so coming to Canada, Morris was the first real exposure to, <laughs> to dancing. I found the team very exciting and energetic and <laughs> friendly. <laughs> it, has been, it has been very difficult. Uh, I, I remember in the, first, uh, in the first year that I was involved with Morris, uh, I had so much difficulty of understanding whether, what everybody is talking about with regards to the music. But I think, as I said, people were very friendly and they were helping me a lot along the way. Just pretend I'm not here. <laughs> Poker face. Yeah, I, uh, I'm an engineer and for a, um, a gas company. Um, it's called Duke Energy Gas Transmission. Um, it's a very boring job, but I guess um, it's good to give me some money. <laughs> oh, I just want to add that the um, Morris uh, dancers are very friendly again. I want to emphasize on that. <laughs> and they help a lot during the time that uh, I have been struggling understanding both the dance and the music. So I, I do like to appreciate that and uh, I really enjoy working with them. Nobody knows where that name from came from. Nobody knows what it really means. 
And that's just the way it should be. For these dancers may have come to England with the Anglo-Saxon invasions in about the 5th century AD. So it's OK if a few details have been lost. This next dance is of the older variety, as you will hear from the music. I feel that the Morris community isn't as, at least in most of the social groups for Morris, the social group seems fairly fixed. Many Morris dancers are sort of the same age range, same uh, background, same, it's kind of the English thing. And not that there aren't, like there are, especially on our side, we've got some younger members, which is nice. We've got multicultural members, which is nice. But the whole overall thing seems to stick pretty close to the English tradition, which is what it is. And, if you don't want to go to the pub and sing, then it can be boring. <laughs> uh, these favorite things probably are, are when we get concerned about that we must absolutely be traditional because this is how it was done, you know, two centuries ago. Uh, this is not my concern at all as I think that uh, the dance comes out of where people live. Okay? The dance that was developed in England developed because of the relationship between people and their land. Okay? The same thing is here. We would make a different dance because we live in a different place. So that's probably my least favorite part. Um, I'm very careful when I'm explaining Morris to say that the dances come from England, although that's not the case, there's even contemporary dances being written wherever we're dancing, and that it's the dancers themselves. Um, I don't feel like I'm carrying some particular torch for old England or anything like that. I dance because I like the music and I like the people, and I like the dancing, obviously. really precious with Morris so you can make it well really perfect and technically uh, wonderful and, and everything but I think that it really only has life when it has a, a wacky side that's where anything could happen and nothing is too too precious